Hi, my name is Kanaya Witt. I am 20 years old and I just had my fifth miscarriage. Well, let's start off with my experience. Um, disclaimer, this video is not for everyone, but it needs to be for everyone because as I'm about to have my notes and as I'm about to get into nitty gritty of it, we're gonna discuss how it's so taboo to have a shoulder to lean on or to talk to your partner or anyone about this experience, even though it's a natural experience, but let me get into that. So first, my experience. Like I said, I am 20 years old and I've had five miscarriages. I just had my fifth one, I wanna say about January 2nd. Let me give you the details about that. So, I have, okay, so the last period was December 2nd, 2020, no, 2021, sorry. Um, and then my con uh, you know, conceived date was either the December 14th to December 15th of 2021. Uh, found out I was pregnant December 31st, 2021, so New Year's Eve. And then shortly after that, I had a miscarriage. Um, what happened is I am that 5%. If you don't know what I'm talking about, remember I have notes, but I am that 5%. I have to embrace I am that 5%. This is new for me too. We're, we're going through this together. Um, okay. Notes. So my, I previously had four miscarriages before the year of 2021 i have had four miscarriages all in the first trimester never went past the first trimester i had one pregnancy which was a missed miscarriage so you can clinically say what you want to say really don't matter for me but i went my body went to my to the the third the twelve or thirteenth week of pregnancy, so basically I like just touched the second trimester type situation, but that um, child didn't. And I'm gonna use the word child. If you, I feel like if you use words fetus, embryo, things like that, you're uh, dissociating yourself. You know, you're you're pulling yourself back from the experience to try to help with your um, griefing, which is not. A positive thing it's not healthy but you can grieve the way you want to grieve but they were children they were babies it was just not their time so like I said I've had four miscarriages um, it's usually around six to seven weeks but it has been earlier for me recently uh, this time the one that happened in 2021 what happened was um, so I had my implantation and everything. First off, I just said, because females really don't know nothing about your body. And it's very scary. Very, very scary. I know when I'm ovulating, I know everything down to the nitty gritty. And it has nothing to do with like uh, crunching numbers. It's just paying attention. If you see something going on, mark it on your period app. If you don't have a period app, why don't you have a period app? Like, what, what's going on? Pay attention to your body. So I knew when that egg fertilized, I know all my symptoms, I knew it down to nitty gritty. So uh, my egg implanted, you know, fertilized all that good stuff, and then my body attacked it because there was a, a chromosome issue, genetics. Um, and that's why I was saying I am that 5%, 5% of, you know, miscarriages happen due to chromosome issues and that is a lot to bite that is a lot to swallow that is a lot to chew to know um you have miscarriages because there's some genetic thing going on i can only speak for myself but i can look at other people experiences i think safely say that you know you feel worthless you you feel like you can't do basic things as a female as I have a kid you know because you're creating embryos that could have cleft foots and 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 
Down syndrome and or something even more serious because you never really know unless you're able to take that tissue to the doctor to be sampled. But obviously something that your body is like, no. And we get mad at our body for saying no. But recently I am so grateful. And I know people might seem like I'm evil for saying that, but I feel like it's because you're still going through your emotions, which you have every single right to. But I'm just past that now. You know what I'm saying? I'm past that. I am grateful for my body doing what it needs to do. I am grateful that my body senses that something's wrong with this baby. Something's wrong with this embryo. If it's, it's, if it's strong, Down syndrome, something. And it's terminating the pregnancy. Yes, we are so sad we didn't have that child. Of course we want a child. We are successful people in our 20s. Like... Come on now, of course we want to have kids, house, dog, cold, goldfish, door. Like we want to have all that. But if your body knows what's best for you, then listen. Because we actually, we, me and my partner, me and my husband, because we soon to be husband, you know, let's talk about that later. But, you know, my soon to be husband, you know, my fiance, we really, we already talked about that. We were, we have, you know valuable conversation so we already discussed that us being in our early 20s we don't think we can handle a child that had a serious disability now you do do you understand the stress behind i never experienced that hopefully i never do but the stress that couples have to go through with birthing and having a child knowing that that child will forever need some type of care knowing that that child will never have a normal life most likely never get a partner you know get married and etc you have to be strong as fuck to go through that and we really just not at 20 and 23 mm -mm, no we just uh you know some autism some adhd okay you know that's for us, in our case, don't try to mix up my words. I know what I'm saying in this video. In our case, that is doable. For anything severe, like in a wheelchair, feeding tube, things like that, we just don't think we're mentally strong enough, which is okay. Embrace that. Embrace that you might not be, it, that that path was not for you, okay? The feelings that I felt. So you know, you know, if you're went through this feelings, you, you could, you know, be like, oh, okay, so I'm not crazy. Like, no, you're not. My feelings was automatically I felt worthless. Um, I feel like in that moment of having the miscarriage, you know, having that baby embryo fetus pass through you, <clears throat> you feel embarrassed. I felt embarrassed. I felt like, man, like I just told him I'm pregnant and all this excitement. He was so excited and now I have to do this embarrassing acts of telling him not like a, I'm just kidding because that's 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 the negativity in our minds it's not a, I'm just kidding but like of this unfortunate situation that happened so you know I felt worthless I'm like dang I can't do the simple things such as you know carrying a child you know as a female as a born female you know I'm supposed to be able to do that and it's just not happening at all I felt like I didn't deserve motherhood I felt like maybe this these these babies keep you know handing on out because they pick me and then be like maybe we picked the wrong person but then once again i had to realize it had nothing to do with me i felt broken like i was saying can't do basic things as a female you know what i'm saying but you can i'm about to get into that so things that i have realized I realize I am not broken. You are not broken. Get that through your head. You're not broken. Your body is doing every single thing it's supposed to do. Doesn't matter if you want it to do it or not. It's your body is literally being perfect doing what it's supposed to do. Your health, your, it's it's supposed to terminate something that would put the mother at risk. At, at, at put the mother and the body at risk of, of dying, getting sick, hardships, any anything. So my, I'm not broken. My body did exactly what it's supposed to do. Uh, what was it? I had to realize things happen at divine timing. It really do. I know in that moment we feel like, damn, you know, that was so, 
that was so cruel that was so sick how could you give me something that i i wanted and i just mm, you know what i'm saying i was just so hungry for it and you snatched it away from me it's because things happen at divine timing and you also always can't blame the universe your god spirit guides all that i remember gotta be sensitive in the conversation so anything and everything that you worship believe in don't whoever barney barney didn't give you this pregnancy and take it away to be cruel you gotta remember like for ourselves, we don't use protection at all at all like cream pies four or five times a month because we're young we're gonna do what we want to do and we had to uh we have the agreement in our relationship where it happens it happens it don't it don't we don't stress about it we don't look at our the temperature ovulation test no if it happens it happens it don't it don't and when it do happen i only get pregnant about max absolute max twice a year but no usually over the years i notice it's just once a year once a year i will get you know a fertilized egg and it just don't happen but yeah you can't always blame you know higher beings it's their fault if you wasn't taking the necessary steps which i'm about to talk about the necessary steps when it comes to pregnancy so if you didn't take the precautions you know before or you're not avoiding the pregnancy whatever you can't blame nobody but yourself babe you can't you can't you can't this is one that i know the girl's not gonna like i know y'all gonna want to tussle over this one because i wanted to tussle over this one but it's okay to have help. I know, you're like, what? No, <laughs> it's okay to have help. It's okay if you need a surrogate. It's okay if you need an IVF. It's okay if you need to adopt. It's okay, hey you. It's okay, like, it's okay to have help. Like, just because you get help in our assistance in any type of way don't mean that you're less than a mother, less than a parent. I mean, you, you, you're you broken, terrible, don't know what you're doing. For myself, I'm talking about my own experiences so we can relate, sis. I don't want, I, I had the mindset where I didn't want to adopt because my fiance is already adopted. He is, he's already adopted. So I extra wanted a child of our own blood. And not even just that, it's also because I want my water birth. I want my breastfeeding. I I want my maternity photos and all that stuff. I want my, that that first half experience. You remember, we got 18 years with that kid, man. 18 years and beyond. But that first little half, I just didn't want to let that shit go. I want to push that baby out. I want to have, I want to roar during my ring of fire. Like, you feel me? Like, I want to cradle my partner while the doula is behind me trying to catch this baby like I want and I'm I want my experience but if it can't happen it can't happen the only thing you could do is uh move forward now and that's the best thing to do is move forward stop being back stop stop being you know stuck in the things of what you can't do and the emotions and all of that you gotta you gotta do what you gotta do forward which i'm about to talk about when i'm about to, but when i could talk about the whole preparing situations and you are not less than because you can't carry yourself don't ever think that you're not less than you are like i said you are still amazing mother you are an amazing female just you just need an assistant and it's okay about that so let's get into these facts second phone Okay, because I'm recording on my iPhone 13 Pro Max. I just have to say that because, like, let me know if the quality is different or something. So, let's talk about the facts. Because I know I'm definitely making these videos now, not only for my older audience, but for my younger audience. Yes, I was 16, 17, 18, etc. having miscarriages. That's not my business. That's not none of your business. That is my business. You see me through a screen and you hear the numbers and you be like, oh my God, she's a baby having a kid. I moved out of my mother's house at 15, worked my ass off, owned a business and everything. And now I am engaged with an amazing, loving man at 20. You don't know nothing about me. So when you see these other girls go with their teen pregnancies and shit, you don't know nothing about them. You gotta remember, people are maturing over generations too. Just because you was 14 and Tweety Bird shirts and stuff, you gotta remember not everybody had that same has that same mentality of, you know, I'm a kid mentality. And it has a lot to do with their environment. 
when I was eight years old, I was by myself babysitting my uh, siblings at home because my mom had to go do what she had to do and go to, you know, welfare offices and this and that. And you know what I'm saying? So we, a lot of us was put in, in situations where we had to mature sooner. I have to say that because especially Karen's, the, the, the Karen, that's, that's another thing that we need to talk about inside this whole miscarriage infertility community. Older white females are absolutely evil in this environment. And I can say that from experience. I used to use this app called What To Expect. I have trauma towards that app. It was nothing but older white females in our 30s and 40s belittling younger females going through miscarriages and trying to talk because it's like a chat, trying to talk about their experience. Like, oh, you're a kid. It happens because you're a kid. You had no business having sex. Okay. What is your reason to have a miscarriage? Crickets. 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 And usually, I don't want to sound evil, but usually it's the truth. I'm telling the truth. It's your, it's you, that's you if you want to put emotions behind it or not. But usually the reason why those older, bitter females be on the app bullying and everybody is because they did every single thing society told them to do that they knew were wrong. So they was on birth control ever since they got their period at 10 years old all the way until they was 25. They, they did the fucking, they did that. They got multiple abortions. I don't care where you stand when it comes to abortion. We all know the bodily damages that goes on that nobody wants to talk about per usual because it has to do with the whole mind games and shit. But when it comes to abortions, that shit does body to that, that that shit does fucking that it does damage to your your uterus and your body and your hormones, especially if you're just have a female, which we on social media try to talk about. But of course, nobody wants people have this mindset now where if you don't agree with them, they don't want to be associated with you, which is a disgusting mindset to have. And we can't sit here, have a conversation with each other and just understand, we you know, agree to disagree you're the problem not everybody else so like i said they had abortions back to back purposely getting pregnant getting pregnant not taking the necessary precautions you know just at parties doing what they want to do having miscarriages back to back pumping themselves with all these hormones and then now that they're married and successful in their 20 in their 30s and 40s now their body is like oh now you want me to have a kid now you want me to have a kid and that's why they're just bitter and angry at every young person on that fucking app. And I don't care if you, what you feel, I'm saying my own experience as myself. And nobody can try to tweak the own experience that I had. So let's get into the facts about miscarriage. So if you don't know anything about miscarriages, but you just had one, whatever's going on, I'm going to let you know. So a miscarriage is also called a spontaneous abortion. Abortion has a negative uh, condensation, kind of... Girl, my words right now. A negative meaning behind it, because you know we hear all the politic debate about it. But abortion is just termination of a pregnancy. So it was a spontaneous termination of pregnancy. Uh, another thing that we also have to remember is that it is common. Miscarriages are very, very common. That's another thing that society won't tell you. They make you feel like, oh, you had a miscarriage. You're broken. Go away. That's weird. No. Like, girl, I'm pretty sure you got your mom, your sister, your aunties. I'm pretty sure they have miscarriages as well. So the spontaneous loss of a woman's pregnancy before the 20th week, that can be uh, both physical and emotional, emotionally painful. So the most common types of pregnancy loss miscarriages often occur because the fetus isn't developing normally. That's what we was just saying. You're, I mean, five percent. You're five percent. Yes, I gotta tell you better talk about this because there's a lot of emotions in this, and I gotta do this. Gotta do my light work. But fetus wasn't developing normally, honestly. And you gotta remember, take your emotions out of it, and take the whole guilt trip. And I'm terrible. What would you? What would have? Would you? What, honestly, put your take the emotion. What would you have done? As whatever age you at, don't matter if you was sixteen to fifty eight. If you would have gave birth to a baby with two heads, and I'm not being funny, you don't see me smiling, I'm being serious. It's a serious com uh, serious question. I do some shadow work right now. If you had a baby with two heads, how would you feel about that? Do you have the proper medical for that child? Medical as an insurance? Do you, because this Medicaid out here, child, 
they don't really care unless you're dying. So do you have the money for that kid? Do you have the mental for that? Do you? If your baby came out right now with the whole, but people keep forgetting is real, these the genetic mutations as in, you know, the cyborg, one eye, sealed mouth, no ears. How would you feel about that? And I'm actually happy that my body and other people's bodies are starting to catch up to, to the, the gen, you know, the genetic defects in terminating the pregnancies. Because back in the days, like, like back in the days, they used to, that's where they, all these babies is on the display. They used to, the, the body used to let them have that baby, that baby with four arms and two heads. And I feel like the most sad cases in my own op opinion is where all their, I don't know what words you want to use, but all their like nose, mouths, ears, eyes are all sealed shut because that skin over it because that's how it grew. Baby can't breathe, it's going to suffocate. Like it's, that baby have a terrible death. The freaking only probably max like hour it was alive out of your womb. You gotta remember, things happen for a reason. And this is what's so taboo about society that we want to talk about, but it needs to, we need to talk about it. Like, because if not, we all going to have to just be sitting here with our mental health crisis. Hey, babes, I completely understand that this conversation can really be a toll on your mental health and everything that you got going on. If you need a break, take this as your break. Go ahead and pause the video. Go have some water. Go cry. Go write. Go do what you got to do. But just come back to finish this video because I promise everything gets better. 15 to 25 percent of all pregnancies in a miscarriage now when you hear that i know i use that, that mindset too 15 to 25 15 to 25 percent that's not nothing that's like somebody say hey there's a 50 percent chance you might choke like girl 15 out of 100 that ain't nothing when it comes to Important things like medical that 50 percent is huge that people don't understand that those those little percentage are huge. Now, only 5% of women will have two or more miscarriages. I know a lot of people don't really tell you this or they tell you in a very negative way, but just because you have one miscarriage or a stillbirth, you do have a strong chance of having a normal pregnancy after that. But there is only 5% of females that will have two or more miscarriages. I am, can I wit, 20 years old, I am, that 5% of females. I have had five miscarriages all through, all due to chromosome and genetic issues. The, uh, the embryos were not developing correctly. Now, with that being said, if you're a female aged to 35 to 39, your percent of miscarriage is 25%. Once again, some people might feel like that's not high, when it comes to medical, that's high. So, the chances of miscarriage. First pregnancy, they're supposed to be only 11 to 13% of miscarriage. No, it's not 50-50. I feel like if it was a 50-50 chance, I'm pretty sure a lot of females would have just you know, stop having sex. Because that is very scary. Just playing Russian roulette. Um, after your first miscarriage... It goes from 14 to 24%. After your second miscarriage, it goes to 24 to 29%. And for myself, after three or more miscarriage, mer miscarriages, your, the chances of miscarriage is 31 to 33%. And I'm smiling because I'm smiling through my pain. I am strong and I'm going to get through it, which we're going to talk about at the end. 33% uh, chance. Having a pregnancy and 33% chance of that pregnancy failing is huge. It's huge. So a lot of people would have been take that chance, but I'm going to take that chance the proper way, which I explained at the end. So yeah. Up to 80% of the time, a miscarriage in the first trimester is a chromosome a chromosomal uh, problem with the embryo. Thus, a woman's body is working correctly when she miscarriage. Once again, if your body sense that that baby is growing two heads, you can't get mad at your body for doing what it's supposed to do. You can't. It's not, 
It's not reasonable. It's not logical. It's it's not. So we're gonna have I'm um, gonna talk about some more facts about the miscarriage, and then we're gonna talk about what we could do after that. So some more facts that you need to know. Especially, I feel like the not the most important one, but the one people forget or just simply don't know of to begin with is the pregnancy after miscarriage. So, few causes of miscarriage can be PCOS, advanced age, which is that 30 and up pl uh, club, hormonal problems, bad lifestyle. Yes, that means jacuzzis, backflips, drinking, bad lifestyle, untreated illnesses, any illnesses, uncontrolled diabetes. People with diabetes, I know you guys got it really tough because the whole insulin problem and a baby having too much insulin can be deadly. Um, uterus abnormalities, um, that means double uterus, things like that. I'm like, this, this a lot can go on. Some few infections and stress and depression. People don't think stress and depression can cause that, but it can because your mental, everything that goes on in your brain has to do with chemical reactions. So that chemical reaction going everywhere, doing everything it's supposed to do and hurting that baby. So now we're going to talk about the precautions and things you could do after you have this miscarriage, right? You're following? So after we have a miscarriage, talk about your experience. Talk to your mom. Talk to your sister if your family's not toxic. And talk to a friend and be like, you know, hey, I'm sad. This is what I'm going through. Please don't expect them to have a magical answer because a lot of them have never experienced this to begin with. So they don't know what to say. But just talk it out. If you don't want to talk about it, you feel so clamped up, write it out. Be like, yeah, I feel worthless, but I'm not. That's my odds. That child had a birth defects and my body is a machine. So it did what it had to do. Self-care. Go take a bubble bath. Go out. Go think. Put yourself first for a week or two at least. Put yourself first. Make yourself breakfast in and do those extra steps. Today, I had oatmeal with beautifully cut up strawberries. Sounds so small, but think, when is the last time you made yourself French toast with powdered sugar, with syrup, with raspberries on top? When did you do the nine yards for yourself? Yeah, you had pancakes, but like, did you make it pretty? Did you, did you, did you make yourself excited for it? You got dressed yesterday, but did you put on that, your favorite color lipstick? Did you put on your favorite color perfume? Your favorite perfume? Why not? Because you're not putting yourself first. And this is the last one. Prepare for your body next time. People feel, and I know I've been there, done that. Like, I don't want to sound like a vet of miscarriages, but in reality, yes, I have had five. I'm here to help you. I'm here to do light work and bring light to your life. People don't ever, people forget to tell you that you can prepare for the next time. They think it's just, you had a miscarriage, you're sad, you're crying, and now that's it. No, girl, get out of that. Prepare for the next time, which I'm going to prepare my body for the next time. First thing you could do, blood test a blood test is usually suggested to detect any underlying problems with your hormones or immune system no matter if you have medicaid or fancy insurance go let your doctor know that you have had you know history of miscarriage or you have had a miscarriage and you would like blood tests to check out your immune system and your hormones you don't need to go in there with a full list they after you say that they sh if they qualify they should know what you're talking about your estrogen your everything next uh, what I need to do, chromosome testing. You and your partner are required to undergo blood tests to analyze any possibilities of a, a chromosome makeup that affects carrying the pregnancy through. Like I said, I have never been past the first trimester. Never. So that's what me and my partner need to do next is our chromosome issues. Our chromosome test is to figure out what's going on. Third thing you could do, because it's a list, pay attention ultrasound an ultrasound helps you helps to know the condition of your cervix and the uterus which is important because the cervix is a, a tunnel and it is supposed to you know harden and plug up with mucus so nothing could goes in and out but if something's going on with your uterus uh, your cervix is too short or etc that can cause some issues like I said with your uterus if your uterus lining is too thin or too thick the egg may not be able to implant correctly which is causing it to um, grow incorrectly. 
and if you have a double chain a uh, double chamber uterus which you is literally having a wall in between your uterus so you now have two of them that can cause issues as well so it is done either internally or externally depending on the circumstances what they're talking about is the ultrasound machine they could put it up your i'm about to be immature like not immature but i was about to like sugarcoat it we're adults <laughs> if you're having sex you're an adult sorry it's just how the world works so if they're putting the the ultrasound stick machine in your vaginal uh, cavity so they'd be able to see that the bottom portion uh, better or they could put it on the, the typical one on top so they could just see like the the full like looking at the water type situation just like the full of it the fullness of it um four i can't say this word i'll put this stuff up here to begin with anyway so this is done to examine the health of your fallopian tubes in uh urine system okay so i know what they're talking about i can't say the word but i consider getting this test done uh your insurance is most likely not gonna pay for it. you got to pay for this yourself but you can go to a fertility center and they can get all this done for you and you have financing options which i'm going to do and like i said yeah i know you'd be like damn wow now i gotta pay money to have a baby think about it from a positive light now you have we're we are in modern day so now you are able to pay money to have a baby correctly you know what i'm saying because if you do it by yourself obviously you know for me it's like a 40 percent chance of the pregnancy not ending correct uh, I'm, of me not getting through my pregnancy because i'm gonna terminate the pregnancy because the chromosome issues if i pay i can eliminate that 40 percent chance to a 20 and 20 is not as bad as 40 girl yeah 20 is a lot but it is not as bad as 40 40 is basically damn if i do damn if i don't so this test is they're putting like a like a dye water inside your uh, cervix is gonna fill your fallopian tubes and, and your uterus and it's gonna see, it's gonna uh, let them be able to see if there's any clogs or uh, blockage or anything like that that's what you could that's what you that's the first steps all those five six steps which you I just said that's the first steps you need to do honestly another thing is uh, must have foods to prevent miscarriage when I don't take the word prevent to heart because I'm not gonna be like, oh yeah, it's preventing a billion percent. No, but still having lowering lowering some percentage. So you know, like I said, 40 to 30 to 20 is still so much better. Like, cause that 10% can really make or break your bank. So yeah. Number one, go for dairy. It's saying daily consumption of dairy products lower the risk of miscarriage by 30%. This is what the doctors are saying. Once again, I'm, I'm gonna say my disclaimer too because a lot of people need to wake up. Don't take the medical system completely to heart. There are humans who read a book who like know some knowledge more than you, but it's the same books that you can read if you can get your hands on them. With that being said, they're recording, they're saying data that has been recorded. They're not a billion percent right. Just like recently they found out that um, a female was pregnant on her liver. I know people, uh, but your doctor, you say your doctor, like, no, that's not possible. The egg will not survive out of sight of the room. No, it happens every day, all day, because they really don't know what the fuck they're talking about besides what they read. What happened with, with this lady and her fallopian tube, the egg fertilized and flo instead of floating down to her uterus, it flowed backwards. And the, how the, the fallopian tube work is that it's the ovary and it's like this finger life situa finger like situations on a fallopian tube and an egg went backwards it floated outside into the abdomen the the fucking <laughs> your stomach organ area and attached itself to the liver so her baby was growing outside of her liver attached to it and her placenta was growing inside of the liver and she had a, that baby by c-section that baby was a billion percent healthy so like i said you guys need to get into your 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 her your herbs and you know your your own medicine because doctors can only know so much. They have to know how it works. They have to wait you know years of collecting data, crunch that data, and then rewrite the books. And that's why they have to keep going to schools to keep learning new things. Two, fresh fruits and vegetables. Eating fruits and vegetables lowers risk of miscarriage by forty six percent. So basically, all this is about to be talking about the healthy lifestyle. If you're not eating properly, if you're not eating a balanced breakfast if you're waking up having a uh, coffee and a donut and you don't eat again until six o'clock and because you had a, like a like a pudding cup how the fuck and i don't care if i get monetized or not how the fuck do you think you're gonna be able to support a child yeah you only have to have an extra 300 calories but since you're not having calories for yourself 
and you're not even having healthy calories for yourself. So wake up, drink your water. You part of the problem too, babe. Fix it, but it's okay. It happened, but we're going to fix it properly now. Three, have fish and like chicken. Eating fish or chicken two times a week lower risk by miscarriage by 15%. You see how I keep saying 15, 46, 30? Use all that and it lowers it dr drastically. Have, have eggs. Eating eggs uh, causes miscarriage risk to drop by 30%. Fiber, fiber is really important to you know get things pumping to get your digestive tract clean, so you won't be constipated, etc. Replacing refined uh, carbohydrates with high fiber foods improves fertility. Next, things that you could do for your next time around. Uh, felicid, I can never say this word. Felicid, folicid acid. Um, this is really important because it helps the, the baby develop uh, properly. But this exact um, vitamin is kind of the most important part, which honestly, if you're not getting it, could be your main corporate of causing ge genetic issues. It's for the, their brain and spinal cord um, development. I'm about to show you the uh, gummy. So I have been taking this vitamin for about three, four days now. I like this brand, it's called Ollie. <laughs> might not focus but the perfect woman's multi a powerful blend of vitamins a c d e b's multiple b's biotin and the felicid acid so important for you to have these you take these twice a day what does they look like they stink but it stinks to me because i don't like the raspberry i don't like raspberry anything but you already taking multivitamins is already having your body with the much needed vitamins that um pregnancy needs so for instance if you're not like me if you really just don't be knowing that she's pregnant ever type situation then that you, you taking uh, eating right and having taken the right vitamins is even more important for you because while you having your day-to-day -day life thinking you're not pregnant you could be pregnant and your baby can be there literally not getting any nutrients not getting anything important that they need which can cause death which is you know can cause miscarriage so now you know that maintaining healthy weight this will we talk about our distress and depression all that that could tell you that can that could be a lot for that if you're having drastic weight that can cause issues overweight or underweight that's not having a uh that means your body is lacking things or have too much or something and that's not the proper nutrition for yourself See, if you if you hear all this stuff, all of this plays a giant role in each other and it just goes in a giant circle back to back to back to back to back, honestly. Fitness. If you're young, yes, you're supposed to be going to the gym. If you're young, there's no way, there's no way to sugarcoat it. You're supposed to be going to the gym, do some running, some swimming, some something. Laying on a couch on social media all day, getting up to you a pop tart, that's not that's not no that's not the the proper lifestyle for yourself, damn for sure not, but you carrying a baby. Uh, four, avoid alcohol and drugs. That stuff is explanatory. If I have to explain that during this video, you should have be having kids to begin with. I will uh, acknowledge the marijuana conversation, but that's for my open-minded babe, which that's another video because people who's close-minded, I don't have time for that. But if you're open-minded, we can have a debate about that. Five, yoga and meditation. Very important. Yoga is an exercise. If you don't want to go to the gym, do yoga. I look up some black owned yoga people all the time on um YouTube actually. Ariana Elizabeth. Not only you see it, sorry. But Ariana Elizabeth. Her banner says Bright and Salted Yoga by Ariana Elizabeth. She has amazing beginner friendly, you know, 10 minutes yoga situations, do some meditation. People think even if you're spiritual or religious, it don't matter. You can sit in one spot, clear your mind, ignore all the background noise and have some type of frequency music going in and just relieving stress. That has nothing to do with your God, Jehovah, Allah, Jesus, McDonald's. It has nothing to do with nobody. People gotta understand spirituality is not a religion, it's a lifestyle, but. I understand. I, I watched Infinite Waters, and he put this in the best, best situation, the, the the best thing for y'all to understand. Religion is for people who are scared of going to hell. 
spirituality is for people who's been through hell. If you didn't let that sink in, because you're closed-minded. I'm going to say that one more time. Religion is for people who's scared to go to hell. Sheep. They need to be guided through life. Oh, oh my goodness. I need to drive below the speed limit and give 50% of my money to tithes and offerings so I can go into heaven and I can have a good life. Versus spirituality, been through hell. People don't understand hell is a mindset. Hell is earth. Babies getting killed every day. People getting hung because of the color of our skin, which is nothing but pigmentation. This is hell. But that's a conversation for another time. Uh, so support groups. Like I said, talking about it. If you don't want to talk about it because you're a shy person, write about it. But you having emotions just pent up is absolutely not going to help you in any positive way at all. It's just like anything. If your mother died grieving, you know you got support groups. You get to talk to somebody. Do the same thing with these miscarriages. Miscarriages still births all of them because it is something that is emotionally traumatizing. It's, it's traumatizing to know this person you created out of love and light, hopefully. I can only speak for myself. I created out of love and light, passed away due to genetic issues. That's a lot to swallow. It is. But with that being said, we got this. I got this. I love you guys. I am proud of you guys. Everything that you are doing is for a reason. You found this video for a reason. Your higher power, spirituality, whatever the hell you believe in, will never put you in the wrong situation. They will never put you in anything you couldn't handle. You went through this because you're strong. You're strong and you're not emotional. You understand the situation that's happening and that happens when it comes to your miscarriage. It was a genetic issue. You're not worthy. You are absolutely fucking amazing. It's okay. And if you want to avoid the genetic issues again, that's why you gotta take all the steps I told you. So the next time you have your pregnancy, you have a higher chance of having a healthy pregnancy, bro. Like, you got this. I love you. Once again, Kanaya's Numa. Like and subscribe. Peace.